Mo Egger of ESPN's 1530. Welcome into Cincinnati Bengals talk here on YouTube. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. And is there a one guy, any position that you'd say, hey, that would be a lot of fun if they went out and got him or that would make a lot of sense for this roster? Well, I'll go, I'll go the cheap way out because the Odell Beckham Jr. thing fascinates me, not even necessarily from a Bengals perspective, but think of what the conjecture was when he left Cleveland. Mm -hmm. It was not sure he can play anymore. Mm -hmm. And then he goes to L.A. and he plays well, and he was great in the Super Bowl until he got hurt. But then he's had a significant knee injury. Did he do enough prior to the injury to answer the question? about whether he can still play or does the injury make you double down on the question as to whether or not he can still play? I don't have the answer to that because I'm not in, I'm not examining his knee, but th that's interesting, right? Because until he came off the field in LA in the Super Bowl, he answered the question. He can still play. Yeah. But then there's an injury. So does that wipe away the, whatever it was, five or six regular season games he played in and, and whatever he did in the postseason, does that wipe that away? Um, if the answer is no, Odell Beckham Jr. can't help a team, right? That, that's the one that, that for me is, is most interesting. Um, and, and less so from a Bengals perspective, but he is a big name. And that conversation, when he left Cleveland, it wasn't, you know what, he's a pain in the neck. It was, I'm not sure he could play anymore. Mm -hmm. Are we still asking that or did he do enough prior to the injury to answer that question? So that's kind of the cheap way out, but that of among every player who's available still uh, two weeks prior to training camp, that's the most interesting question. All of these other guys you're, you're wondering, you know, with, with many of them, can they, do they still have anything left in the tank? Do they have anything they can offer? Maybe they're coming off an injury, but the way we positioned the Odell Beckham jr. Conversation last year, and then, add an injury to it and time. What is, what does that mean for the consensus about him in the NFL? It, it's funny. Cause as you were describing that, and I agree when, at least on paper, if he's healthy, it feels like he is, you know, there's a chance he could be better than the rest of these free agents that are available and help a team and all of those things. Mm -hmm. JC Treader is the other guy, both guys mm -hmm. played in Cleveland last year. Look, the Bengals aren't – I think they're more likely to sign Odell Beckham Jr. than J.C. Treader. I think they're locked in on Ted Karras at center. Right. But J.C. Treader is a damn good center still. Like, I don't know why he's still out there. I don't know if he has a handshake deal with the Browns, mm -hmm. which is weird because he's the NFL PA president, so I don't think that would necessarily work. <laughs> um, but you know what I'm saying? Like, how is he still out there right now? Like, he on paper – and I'm not trying to be mean to Ted Karras right. – is better than Ted Karras. So uh, mm -hmm. Ted Karras was signed three hours into the tampering period. JC Treader gets released because he's a cap casualty and he's just still out there. Like what the hell is going on? That, that one's really weird to me. Riley reef is still out there, right? Yeah. Riley is. Did there. Riley reef play bad? No. Like, okay. Lyle Collins is better. Mm -hmm. Did Riley reef play to the level that he shouldn't have a job in the NFL. Now, again, this season ended early with an injury. How much mm -hmm. does that linger? But, I always hear you can't have enough offensive line. I always hear continuity is key on the offensive line. Mm -hmm. Riley Reef is available. A year ago or, you know, 15, 16 months ago, uh, people were soiling themselves over the idea of Joe Burrow and Riley Reef smoking cigars together. And uh, I don't have the pro football focus grades in front of me. Was he their, their second best offensive lineman last year? He, he was he fine was as a pass played. blocker. When he yeah. played, right, when, when, when he was on the field. So, again, I'm, I'm thinking of, like, familiar names. Also, Joe Hayden still available? Mm -hmm. Joe Hayden or Eli Apple, James? Wow. You went there. <laughs> you, you, think, you think Joe Hayden's an upgrade? You went there. No, go ahead. Go ahead. <sighs> Eli Apple is low-hanging fruit. And I'm 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 uh, – I'm, I'm uh, what's the word that I'm looking for here? I'm unfairly influenced by watching him run around in the Super Bowl. And yeah. if, if Eli Apple is your fourth cornerback, that's totally fine. Joe Hayden at his best was really freaking good. Now he's not at his best anymore. He's been cut by one team and played a while for another. But I mean, if I'm looking for like, you know, again, what do they say about DBs? You can't have enough. Mm -hmm. And everybody this offseason was trying to run Eli Apple out of town. Well, 
you still want to do that, I, I don't. I, I you would need to speak to somebody who has watched uh, both players critically uh, more than I have head to head and go, okay, well, Eli is better than the other. But all I know is leading up to the draft, if you brought up, you know what, Eli Apple is going to be on the team, people will laugh at you. So, okay, if we're still going to do that, and maybe we aren't, are we not looking for available replacements? Would he still be the top available DB at this moment? Could be, and could certainly be an upgrade over Eli Apple. And that, that's the thing yeah. is... Chris Harris wh- is still out there there if i'm not mistaken Uh, other than that if if you're still like on this why is eli on the team and and i get that question a lot i'm drawing a list of available corners i I still got to think he's he's at the top no yeah i i think he's in the range for sure i think he would be but does he want to come here and be the fourth corner so that's part of it but for as good as eli apple was last year the Bengals signed him to a four million dollar contract so for as good as he was at times, it's not like, yeah, uh, you know, the rest sure. of the league was beating down sure. his door. So I right. think that says a little bit about the Bengals think about him and a, a little bit about what the league thinks about him. And so, yeah, a guy like Joe Hayden, could he come in? Maybe. What, I would not shock yeah. me one bit if Hayden had a better season than Eli Apple wherever he lands, whether it's Cincinnati or elsewhere. Yeah. I mean, again, if you're just looking at guys who are available right now, th- mm-hmm. there's – in most cases, a compelling reason why it's, you know, the middle of July and they're still available, but, you know, okay. I mean, and I even had to ask because I, I wasn't sure if somebody, you know, picked him up, but I mean, again, um, I don't have a major issue with Eli Apple being somewhere on the depth chart, right? Mm -hmm. He's not going to be covering wide receiver ones. Ideally he's not on the field a ton, but if he's your fourth corner, third corner, fourth corner. Mm -hmm. Okay. I mean, that's, that's not bad, right? That's, that's really not awful. But if you are still looking to replace him with an established player, there's one. Yeah. Yeah. And it'll be interesting. I do think the Bengals, the reason I I started the free agency stuff, I think at some point they're going to add someone. It's just a matter of who. And uh, it's going to be interesting to see what position they address. Well, maybe in the middle of camp. I could see that happening as well. He's Mo Egger. Make sure you check him out every single weekday, three to six on ESPN 1530 and on the iHeartRadio app. Wow. It's right. The big show it, with Mo. It, make, it makes me happy that you still remember what time the show's on. Yeah. Th- did I get it wrong? Uh, I know in no. one intro, one, one <laughs> intro, uh, and we edited it out la- last time I had you on, I said uh, noon to three. So I'm glad that I got it, oh. got it right, three to six. So I, I didn't even catch it. So I mean, you're, we're lucky we know that, that, that I know what time the show is on. I mean, you know, that's, it's amazing sometimes that I f- don't forget to show up. And, and many would argue that mentally most days I do. So, but yeah. Thanks. Thanks for having me, James. Of course, man. Thanks for coming on.